was my first. <laughs> my first sexual experience. A lesbian. <laughs> Relax, I'm not. This is just a haircut. <laughs> Sorry, ladies, I like the D. <laughs> Still, for whatever reason, at that time, I found her irresistible. I admit the attraction was purely physical. Don't get me wrong, it's a total doll, but vacuous. Typical LA plastic lady, notable only for her. She was everything I wasn't, but what society said I should be. A beautiful, busty, brainless blonde. <laughs> <laughs> like Vanna White, but more prostitute. <laughs> shiny platinum hair, and sparkly blue eyes that looked excessively filtered. But get real, who's looking her eyes with a rack like that? <laughs> Holy boobs! The most perfectly round, ripe peaches in peach color on top a teeny tiny waist no bigger than a curling iron. <laughs> she was anatomically wrong in all the right ways. <laughs> Down to her long, silky legs and perpetually tiptoed feet, upon which she floated when she walked. <laughs> she was perfect, complete with a Malibu mansion, an equally non-exploding little sister skipper, and a buff beach babe boyfriend, Ken. Yes, she had a boyfriend. <laughs> But we didn't talk about that. <laughs> we didn't talk, really, about anything. Soon as that bedroom door closed, she was my submissive. Did whatever I wanted. Without even the slightest resistance. Which typically meant giving me head. <laughs> Literally, I essentially ran her entire head into me till I saw a star. <laughs> <laughs> she never resisted, tired, nor complained. She never even suggested that I reciprocate. It was the supreme sexual self I have spent my lifetime trying to clone. <laughs> Things only got weird when my dad walked in on it. <laughs> there was no mistaking what was happening. She was basically body slamming my crotch, <laughs> which is difficult to justify otherwise. <laughs> this wasn't like a fart you could pretend was accidental in a chair. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I justify? I didn't know about social mores or, or taboo temptations, <laughs> except that this extraordinary new pastime I discovered evidently made my dad really Uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> he missed and looked away. And very sternly ordered me to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I was consumed with shame, but I didn't know why. Why would this irresistible activity be met with such resistance? <laughs> Later, I overheard family members discussing it. <laughs> She's always fine. <laughs> Which is a perfectly normal age for a girl to play with her Barbie. <laughs> Increasing 
value a vintage toys like her? <laughs> <laughs> now, with my vagina juice on her, there's probably a black market on the dark web for her somewhere. <laughs> As for me, in time, the urge returned. I couldn't resist. No learn to act on it more surreptitiously. About first grade, I stealthily replaced her with my grandmother's banister. <laughs> Had a torrid, unresolved affair with a bar stool around age eight. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Always hard. <laughs> Eventually consummated all this pent up sexual frustration with a real live guy. A butcher in Argentina. Oh. And I was an exchange student in high school. <laughs> so what? That makes me a slut? Because I couldn't resist the most basic, natural, carnal temptation? Please. Barbie was a hell of a lot more fun than my speaking style. <laughs> I got the light right as if my Care Bear cared. <laughs> Albeit strictly sexual, what Barbie and I had was special. She taught me to love myself. <laughs> so what sort of sexed up, mixed up message are we sending our young girls, expecting them to play with yet not be turned on by their super sexualized German prostitute dolls? <laughs>